The following recipe has been approved by Brandy the Wonder Dog. The good? Yeah. Good morning, folks. Welcome back to Mark Kelly Farms. Today we are going to make some homemade butter. But before we get to that, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, homestead and having cows. And a little bit about cows, a little bit about handling cream and stuff like that. So if you have a homestead and you think you want to get into making your own dairy products and having a milking cow, there are some things that you need to consider, especially if you've never dealt with cows before. To start with, um, not all female bovine species uh, just automatically give milk. Uh, there's a process you have to do to get them, turn them into a milking cow. A, a heifer does not give milk. What creates the milk production is that animal having a calf. So once the calf is born and a little bit before the calf is born, the cow will start producing milk. Uh, the first stages of that milk is called colostrum and it's got everything that the calf needs to help survive. Uh, it's got uh, anti antibodies and, and everything that mom has to protect her from disease and other ailments in that milk. Later on it, it tapers off a little bit and uh, it, there's not so much in the milk after a while. But that cow will continue to milk until that calf pretty much weans itself or mama gets tired of that calf nursing. Um, and then that cow will eventually dry up. Uh, if you continue to milk the cow, it prolongs the, the milk production. But even with that, the cow will start to taper off after a while and dry up and will need to be rebred and produce another calf to start producing milk again. Now, if you're going out and purchasing your cow, you can either buy a bred cow at an auction or from somebody that raises animals, uh, which means you're gonna get that cow and then before, after a certain period of time, it's gonna calf because it's already bred and you'll get your milk production. You can raise the calf for, for beef or you can keep the calf and start a herd or whatever you're wanting to do. Um, you can also buy um, a pair, that's uh, a cow that's already calfed, and you can buy the cow-calf combo as a pair. Or if somebody's just getting rid of a milk cow, you can buy a milk cow, but like I said, eventually they're gonna dry up and you'll have to have that cow rebred. Now, another thing you need to think about is when you feel you wanna have a milk cow, you need to remember, you're going to be married to that process. You're going to be in that barn every morning and every afternoon. So if that's not something that you can commit to, which is the reason why we don't do it on here, here on our homestead, we still like to travel and do things. So we don't want to be married to that milking operation. But if it's something that you can commit to, or if you have a neighbor that'll come cover for you when you're gone, you know, you can get that done. But you really need to think long and hard about that before you, uh, you get that animal. Now, some people that have cows, they go buy all the expensive milking equipment and stuff like that. And yeah, they got some really cool uh, pieces of equipment out there now that just, uh, they don't require a vacuum pump. They work just on compressed air too, so. Uh, it's an expense, but it's something that you're going to be doing a lot of, or if you have more than one cow, that's something you may want to look at and it will justify the expense. Now, some people are going to go buy expensive cream separators to separate the cream off the milk. When I lived on the dairy, we just drank everything together. We would go get a gallon of milk a day uh, off the ice machine up at the dairy. And the process was you always shook up the can of milk before you drink it to reincorporate that cream into the milk. And man, that was some of the best milk I've ever had in my life. Now they've made it actually illegal in a lot of places to drink fresh milk, which is absolutely ridiculous. And I have to think it has to do with more than market than anything else. But 
You'll see people go buy these expensive cream separator machines and you really don't need those. I'll give you a little hack right now. If you're dealing with a lot of cream, um, without a cream separator, you can use one of these. If you're dealing with a lot, get, go get you a five gallon bucket that has one of these little spigots on the bottom and you pour your fresh milk in this every day. And cream automatically separates on its own and rises to the top. If you've ever heard that saying, let the cream rise to the top, that's what they're talking about. So uh, say you have an extra fridge like we do here down in the basement. Uh, you could have a pitcher you could bring down and fill it with fresh milk off the bottom when you need milk. And then if when it's time to come process the cream, say you're getting a lot of cream in the top here, uh, pour the rest of your milk off out of this spigot, bring your cream level down, and then you can just dump your cream out of the bucket. You can put fresh milk back in it if you want, put it back in the fridge. But uh, that's a real cheap and easy cream separator that you can do. If you're not dealing with a lot, you can get one of these. This is just a, a drink serving container that you would use for parties or something like that if you're not dealing with a lot of milk. Say you're you're drinking a lot of it and there's a lot, a lot of it that you're going to have to deal with by separating the cream, you can just use one of these, keep it in the fridge. Uh, the cream, just like the other one, will rise to the top and you can pour fresh milk off the bottom. So not real expensive. You don't need those big, crazy, expensive cream separators that'll cost you four or $500 sometimes. So uh, with all that being said, let's go make some butter couple more things I should probably mention. Not all cows are created equal either. Uh, some cow species give better butter fat content than others. So the cows that we used to deal with mostly back in my younger days were Jerseys and Holsteins. Um, for drinking milk, everybody always had Holstein cows, but if they were going to make cheese or butter or anything like that, they generally had Jersey cows because they're milk content or their butterfat content was higher in their milk. The other thing I wanted to mention, um, making your own butter, unless you have your own cow and you have a steady supply of fresh milk, it's not really cost effective to make your own butter because buying cream at the store is about the same cost as buying your butter. So you're really not going to save any money. However, if you want to know exactly what's in your butter, which look at the labels, most butter is just cream and salt if it's salted butter. Uh, if you want to know exactly what's in it, and it does have a little better flavor sometimes, the homemade butter, but uh, you can almost buy butter for what you're going to make it for. Of course, you won't get the buttermilk out of it, the fresh buttermilk, which is actually the true buttermilk, but uh, that's up to you. So... We've got some cream that has been setting down all night to get to room temperature. And like I said before in my cheese video, a lot of times back in the day they didn't have refrigeration. So the milk just was sat out on a, in the coolest place they can. And uh, it actually ripened and it starts getting a stronger flavor as it sits unrefrigerated. So a lot of people will ripen their milk if they have store-bought milk before making cheese or butter or something like that. What we're going to use today is this Pampered Chef um, Quick Mix Pitcher. You can get them from Pampered Chef. i got to give a shout out to my cousin Holly. She's a Pampered Chef dealer. So if you want some Pampered Chef, look up Holly Bumgarner. She'll hook you up with some of these. They make a gallon version too of this. But the reason I like using this is because it has... Uh, the mixing portion that goes down inside the picture that mixes things up, say, before you pour drinks. If it separates a little bit, you just move that plunger up and down and it mixes. But I like it for this operation because it agitates really well and acts just like a butter churn. Um, you don't have to have one of these. You can use a simple mason jar. Um, and an enclosed container works much better. Say, if you have a KitchenAid and you want to use a KitchenAid to make butter, uh, that stuff is going to slosh all over the place and make a mess. So if you can 
come up with some kind of closed container, you're much better off. But fill this jar half full of cream, tighten the lid on it, and give it to one of your kids and tell them to go crazy shaking that thing up. And you'll have butter before you know it. And it's easy to tell because when you have butter, the sides of the glass will actually clean up where you can see through them again. Um, when you start getting like whipped cream, of course, you won't be able to see in the jar. But when you start getting to the butter stage, you'll have a big clump of butter in there and the butter milk. And it'll clean the outside of this glass. And you'll have completely two separate compounds that you can, you can see are actually two separate things. So you can do that. It doesn't take much. You can use a food processor or a mixer or whatever. So we're going to dump this cream right into this pitcher. No special operation. And like I said, it's been made room temperature. And this is just store-bought cream because like I said before, we don't have a cow. So we're not out there milking twice a day. Alright. So we'll put this back in there. We have our little agitator in the bottom. And we're going to make some butter. And I'll come back when it's about whipped cream consistency. I'm not going to bore you with the whole process. See you in a bit. So we are about two minutes into this. It's getting really thick. We pretty much got whipped cream inside of there. You can throw in a little bit of sugar and a little dash of vanilla. And you'll have a really good whipped cream. You can see it will almost pick the pitcher up. It's so thick in there. So what's happening is uh, the cream is aerated. Got some air in it and it's turning into whipped cream. So... As we continue on, the butter fat is going to start to separate from the butter milk and start to come together. The butter fat will all cling together and you'll get a real definite uh, separation. And we'll show you that. All right, you see right now how liquidy that is on the top? The butter has separated out and gone to the bottom of the pitcher. And all we have left on top is the butter milk. And I forgot to tell you earlier, before you start, um, there's the little lines in here that uh, kind of strain the liquid as you pour it out. Make sure you turn that to where it's not over the hole because you'll get splash out of this hole here. So let's pour off the buttermilk. We're going to lift this up. We'll turn that to where those lines are lined back up. And we're just going to utilize our jar here that we had for demonstration purposes. I'm going to pour that buttermilk off into that jar. Now that is your true buttermilk. The buttermilk you buy at the store is actually a cultured milk product and a lot thicker than that. And if you taste this, it's not going to be quite as sour as buttermilk. But if you let it sit out unrefrigerated, keep an airtight lid on it so it doesn't get any weird bacterial or yeast to get into it, after a day or two, you'll have a more sour buttermilk. And you can use it in your baking goods. You can uh, really recommend mixing that into your pancake batter, even if it's uh, like the water mixed pancake batter. You can use this stuff and it'll give you a little extra kick or a little extra zing. So we're going to let all that drain out and you can see what we have in the bottom. We got butter in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to get like a wooden spoon, the handle of it. We're going to break that up and we're going to manipulate it around a little bit and work some more of that buttermilk out of it and then we're going to salt it. But we're pretty much done with the, the churning portion of this. We're going to do the rest with a like a wooden spoon. So you can see I got this really heavy wooden chopstick what I'm using. Just keep breaking up that butter and you'll get some more of that buttermilk to separate out. And we're just going to keep pouring that out and put it in, in our jar. I got the little strainer on there to catch any little piece of the butter that I can throw right back into the pitcher. So we've got it worked over pretty well. You can see the butter down in there. You can see a little bit more of the buttermilk working its way out. We've got quite a bit of buttermilk in our jar over here. So I'm going to let this sit for about five minutes like this. Let some of that drain down in the corner. I've got it just parked up on the, the lid of that mason jar. Put it at a little bit of an angle. And once we get that out of there, we're going to come back and we're going to do what's called washing the butter. 
All right, we let that set for about five minutes. We drain the rest of that buttermilk out. So what you basically have now is unsalted butter. And you could use it just like it is in this state right here, especially if you use it quick enough. But if you're not going to use it right away, you need to do what's called washing. And you can see the buttermilk that we got almost three quarters of a quart of buttermilk out of one quart of cream. And then you figure that's probably about three quarters of a pound of butter. So not a bad yield. So we're going to put some cold water into this and we're going to stir it up. And the water is going to turn kind of milky and that's the rest of the buttermilk coming out in that. And we don't want to add whatever buttermilk we get now into that jar because it's going to be severely diluted. We'll just pour it down the sink or feed it to an animal. But we're going to do that several times till the water is almost clear. And I'll show you what that looks like when we get to that point. All right, can you see that water is almost clear? That's what we're looking for. We pretty much got all the buttermilk washed out of that butter. And all we did was pour probably about a half a cup of cold water in there and just stirred that butter around is all we did. And now the water is pretty much clear. We're done. So this butter is going to last a lot longer now that we've washed that buttermilk out. It's going to be a little more stable. To make it even more stable, we could add salt to it, which gives you obviously salted butter. And we're going to actually add a little bit of salt to ours because I like the salty flavor to my butter. So let me dump this liquid out and I'm going to add salt into it and stir it up. All right, we got our salt all mixed into the butter. We used a quarter teaspoon of salt. And if you're using kosher salt like me, make sure it's a heaping quarter teaspoon because remember the salt granules are a lot bigger. So we got our buttermilk and our butter. Make sure you put it in an airtight container. And it'll keep for a couple weeks, uh, even out on the counter. We keep our butter out on the counter so it's soft and we can spread it. I'm making a little toast to put some of my new butter on. If you're worried about cleaning the pitcher, just run some hot water on it. It cleans right up. And that again, that's your, uh, your quick stir pampered chef pitcher. It also comes in a gallon size. Uh, check out my cousin Holly Bumgarner if you want to buy one of those and storing your butter some people way back in the day would take a cup and saucer and I'll show you so back in the day they would take a coffee cup or a small um, little teacup or something like that and they pack the butter in it and just like at Dairy Queen once they get it done it doesn't come out and then you put a little bit of water into your saucer right here so when you put your cup of butter on it, and you can buy butter dishes that actually do that, that water seals the air from getting into your butter and keeps it fresher if you don't. Um, they didn't have like Tupperware and stuff back in the day, so they would do that. So the butter would be in the cup and the water would seal it up. So now we're going to take some of this fresh almost white bread that Kelly just baked yesterday. We're going to throw some butter on it and we're going to have a pretty fine snack. Now, if you do have access to fresh milk, this butter freezes very well. So make as much as you can, put it away in the freezer, and then when your cow dries up, you'll have a plenty, pretty good butter storage until you can get that cow rebred and have another calf and be back in the fresh milk again. All right, look how crazy creamy that is. Comes right off of there. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Some good looking butter right there. What do you think, Brandy? Is that going to be good? You want some, huh? Alright, let's give this a shot. Mm. Sorry about my hand in the picture. Wow. I hope you try this. There's something about just fresh homemade butter that just kicks the store's butt. Now if you ripen that cream, it would even give it a little bit more flavor. So give that a shot. Don't be afraid of it. Find something old and learn how to do it. Until next time, 
Stay safe, stay healthy. We love you. We'll see you later.